Lesson 5.3, Trigonometric Functions of Any Angle. So we've worked with trigonometric functions in regards to right triangles, but in right triangles we are limited to only angles which are acute angles. And we don't want to be limited by that. We want to be able to take the trig function of any angle. So in order to be able to do that, we need to be able to find what's called a reference angle. And we need to find those among the acute angles that we already know in order to help us find trigonometric functions for non-acute angles. So in a sense, we're saying the reference angle allows us to take any angle and to connect it to some acute angle that we already know how to work with so that we can figure out the trig function for whatever angle we're working with. So in this video I'm going to show you how to find a reference angle and then in class we'll talk about what you do with the reference angle in terms of actually working out trig functions. Alright, so basically this is a three-step process. If your problem is asking you to find the reference angle for 150 degrees, the first thing you have to do is think about where would 150 degrees be in the coordinate plane, in this circle that we were talking about last lesson. So if you think about it a little bit, I think you will come up with the 150 degree angle having its initial side here, on the positive x-axis like we're supposed to and then our terminating side would be something like this so this would be our 150 degree angle okay now step two is to notice the acute angle that is made by the terminal side and the x-axis so the acute angle here is this one. That's the one that we're actually interested in. So even though this was the angle that I drew with 150 degrees, the angle that I'm actually going to look at for the reference angle is this angle right here. Okay, And then step three is to determine the first quadrant angle with the same acute measurement in standard position. So if you think about this, if the orange angle is 150 degrees, then how much is the green angle right here? Well since we know all the way over to the other side of the x-axis gives us 180 degrees total, that means this part would have to be a 30 degree angle. So what I want then is that same acute angle over here in the first quadrant, 30 degree angle. And so this first quadrant angle that I've just found is what we call the reference angle for my original 150 degree angle. And that's really all we're talking about right now, is just making that connection between the angle that we're given and the first quadrant reference angle that it's associated with. So the answer in this case, the reference angle for a 150 degree angle would be a 30 degree angle. Now, there are some tips here for finding reference angles that can make this um, a less tedious kind of job. Um, the first thing is to keep in mind that your reference angle is always a first quadrant angle, which then technically means first quadrant angles don't have reference angles because they are already their own reference, if that makes sense. But if you go into any of the other quadrants, you can just go through the same process that we did, but there are some little shortcuts that you could use that might help you along the way. For example, if the terminal side of your original angle ends up in the second quadrant, 
then your reference angle is going to be a reflection through the y-axis. And that's really what happened here. This is the angle that we started with, right here. Okay, But in order to get the reference angle, we actually just reflected that through our y-axis here and ended up with this in the first quadrant. So a second quadrant angle can be reflected through the y-axis to end up with the reference angle that would be in the first quadrant. Okay. Now if you have a terminal side in the third quadrant, then the reference angle is going to be whatever creates a straight line through to the first quadrant. We'll see an example of that in just a minute. And finally, if you have a terminal side that's in the fourth quadrant, then instead of reflecting through the y-axis, we can actually reflect through the x-axis to get our first quadrant reference angle. So if those kinds of reflections and um, orientations on the graph itself help you to find the reference angle, those are some little shortcuts that you can use. Okay, but remember it's always about the acute angle that's being created by the terminal side and the x-axis. That's how we decide what our reference angle is going to be in the first place. Okay, so let's look at just a couple more quick examples here. <clears throat> so this time we're being asked to find the reference angle for 5 pi over 3. So again, the first thing we have to decide is where is 5 pi over 3. Now again, we have to use some of the um, logic that we saw in our last lesson. We know that starting from here, if I start rotating, if I rotate all the way around to here, that's pi. That's 180 degrees. Well, 5 pi over 3 is going to be more than pi. This is really the same as saying 3 pi over 3. So we have to continue. Another 1 third would put us here. That would be 4 pi over 3. And then another third would put us here for 5 pi over 3. So our final angle actually ends up with a terminal side here and we're talking about this entire angle being 5 pi over 3. <clears throat> okay. Now here's where our little trick can come in. We can go through the process that we explained of looking at what the acute angle would be and then determining the first quadrant angle that would have the same acute measure. Or we can take a look at the shortcut we just talked about. Since this is a fourth quadrant angle, the shortcut said we could just reflect this angle through the x-axis to get our reference angle. Let me try that again. That wasn't very straight. To get our reference angle right here. Okay, And in radians, that reference angle is going to be pi over 3. Another little trick that you can keep in mind is that most of the time, whatever the denominator is on a radian measure, that's probably the same denominator on your reference angle. So that's a good little check too when you're talking about radians. So our reference angle in this case is the angle pi over 3. Okay, One more example here quick. If we want to find the reference angle for 5 pi over 4, now again, we need to think about where 5 pi over 4 is to start with. So again, starting at my positive x axis, if I start rotating around, if I get as far as the other side of the x axis, I've gotten to pi, which is the same as saying 4 pi over 4. And so that means I need to go one more fourth of a pi, which would actually put me right about there. 
So this is where 5 pi over 4 would take me. Oops, sorry, over 4. And we're talking about this angle right here. Okay, now in this case, my terminal side ended up here in the third quadrant. And so the shortcut for this is that the ray, which creates the terminal side in the third quadrant, if I extend that now to make it a straight line into the first quadrant, that is the reference angle that will be associated with this entire angle. And that reference angle is the angle pi over 4. So again, we're seeing how the denominator that I had here originally matches the denominator that I now have in my reference angle when I'm talking about <coughs> excuse me, radian measures. So the reference angle in this case is the angle pi over 4. Okay? So, hopefully that makes some sense, and we're going to see in our class how we can use these reference angles to actually help us find trig functions. So until then, have a good evening, and we'll see you next class.